In this video we're going to do something very cool, we're going to travel through time with Python. Now of course you can do anything with Python including time travel, so we're going to take a look at this package here called Time Machine, and this allows you to travel through time in your tests. So what this package essentially allows us to do is mock date and time calls, and control the return values in order to test date and time specific functionality. So any features that are time bound or rely on changes to the current date or time, Time Machine is going to give you a way to test those in the context of any Python application, but this works well also with Django and other web frameworks. And we're going to walk through a practical example with a quiz app. And let's say a quiz has a time limit, we're going to test that functionality using the Time Machine package. Now before we get started, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support the channel, I'll leave a link to this coffee page below the video and thank you very much to everyone who's contributed to that. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already done so. So let's dive in and have a look at Time Machine. I want to look at this quick example that we have here. So we have a function here, and if we look at the assertion in this function, what we're checking here is that the current date time, when converted to an ISO formatted string, is equal to what you see on the right hand side here. Now of course if you were to run this function on any date that's not the 26th of October 1985, this assertion is going to evaluate to false and it's going to fail the test. But Time Machine gives you this decorator called travel, and what you can do is travel through time to whatever date time you set here as the argument. And if we scroll down here we can see a bit more information about this. So travel is here, it's denoted here, it's a class that allows time travel, and that's to the date time specified by this destination in the argument, and it does so by mocking all functions from the Python standard library that return the current date or date time. And we can use this in different ways, we can use it as we've seen there above as a function decorator, and we can also use it as a context manager, which we're going to do later in this video, and it can also be used independently as well. So when might you want to use this kind of functionality? One approach might be if you have some kind of expiry logic. For example, you might have items that expire after a period of time, let's say one or two days. So after they're created, you can then travel forward in time by that given period and make sure that they are marked as expired as expected. Another approach might be if you're building some kind of monthly report and you want to test that the report captures the data at the end of the month, you might want to travel forward to the end of the month and make those kind of test assertions. And one final example, imagine you have a document that you've created, but you're only allowed to edit it for 24 hours after it's created. So all these kind of time dependent tasks, this kind of package here called Time Machine or others like Freeze Gun, they're going to make it much easier to write tests because they are going to mock all the calls to date and time related functions in Python. Now I think the best way to demonstrate this is to look at an example, and this is an example I've found recently. So I've been working on building a quiz kind of functionality in something I'm building at the moment. And these quizzes, as you can see in this Django model, they have a title, which is a simple car field. We also have the slug for the URL, and we have a time limit in minutes. Now this is a greatly simplified version of the quiz model, but this is the key field here on the model. So the idea is that when you take a quiz which could comprise multiple questions, you have an optional time limit, and it's optional because this time limit can be null. And if you want to complete the quiz successfully, you need to submit the quiz before that time limit expires. Now in the quiz model, we have a save method just to set the slug here, and I want to look at the quiz attempt model. Now this represents an individual quiz attempt from a user. So imagine you try and do a quiz, you either pass or fail, and then you might try it again. So this is linked to a foreign key here for the quiz, and it's also linked to the user who actually participated and took the quiz. So this is a quiz attempt, and at the end you get a score, and it also has a started date time, and a date time for when the quiz was completed, and of course that can be null until the quiz is completed. So that's the model here, and this is the key function that I want to test here, it's called get time remaining. And what this is going to do is calculate the time remaining for the quiz attempt. Now first of all, if we don't have a time limit defined on the quiz model that's linked to the attempt, we can just return none here. And if the quiz attempt is completed, we can return zero, there is no time remaining, but the quiz has been completed. And this functionality, you can change it however you want. This is just a kind of demonstration of this. But if we get to line 45 here, we're going to then perform some date time calculations to calculate how long is left in this quiz attempt. So first of all, we get a time delta, and we set that to the time limit that's specified on the parent quiz model here, and that could be 10 minutes, for example. We then calculate the time that's elapsed in the current attempt, and to do that we take the current date time with timezone.now and we subtract the time at which the quiz attempt was started, and that's that started attribute. And once we have the time and that's elapsed, and that could be let's say 7 minutes, we take the time limit for the quiz, which might be 10 minutes, and subtract that, and that gives us the time remaining. So 10 minute quiz, time limit, subtract 7 minutes, that's going to give us 3 minutes remaining, 
and you get the picture here. What we then return is we call the max function and we pass in zero. So the minimum value we want to return here is zero. And then we take the time remaining and we calculate that as a number of seconds. So for example, if we had three minutes remaining, that's going to return the value 180. And the reason we use the max function is because the time remaining could be negative. So imagine we're looking at a quiz attempt that we started two days ago and the time limit is 10 minutes. This is going to be a negative number in that case. So we return the max function here and we pass in zero as the first argument. Now I hope that makes sense. We're going to test this functionality now. So I'm going to go to the test file here where we have a quiz attempt test case class. And we have a setup method here where we create a user and we're storing that as an instance variable here, self.user. And we also have a quiz that has a time limit here of 10 minutes, as you can see. And we're going to have three different tests. One, we're going to test the quiz with the time remaining. We're also going to test the quiz when the time has expired. Make sure it returns the correct values. And we're also going to test that get time remaining function when we have a quiz that doesn't have a time limit. So let's start traveling through time. In order to do that, we're going to go to the terminal here and we can paste in the pip install command from the documentation to install the package into a Python virtual environment. Once you've installed it, you can clear the terminal and we're going to go back to this test file. And let's test the instance where we have a quiz attempt and it was started at a given time and there's still some time remaining. We want to make sure that the function that we saw or the method that we saw in the model here returns the correct value. So let's remove the pass statement from this. And we're going to create an attempt object here. So it's going to be quiz attempt dot objects dot create. And we're going to pass a quiz into that. So the attempt is linked to a quiz and that's going to be self dot quiz with limit. And that refers to this one here that we created on line 11. And we also want to tie the attempt to a user. So I'm going to tie it to self dot user and that's the user we created in the setup method on line 10. So now we have a quiz attempt. And when we create this, if we go to models dot pi and look at the quiz attempt model, this started field here, which is used in the get time remaining method. This has auto now add set to true, which means when the row is added to the database for the quiz attempt, it's going to automatically set the started time. So we don't need to specify that when we actually create the attempt here. But what we are going to do now is test what happens if we go forward in time by two minutes from when this attempt was started. Now what we're going to do at the top is we're going to import time machine. So let's do that just now import time machine and we're going to use that and we're going to use a context manager and that travel method that we saw in the documentation. So if we want to go forward two minutes what we can do is use the time machine dot travel method and our destination is where we want to travel forward in time to. So we're going to take the quiz attempt that we got on the line above and we're going to take the started time and let's go forward by a given time delta. So time zone dot time delta and we're going to pass minutes to two here. So this gives us a time delta of two minutes and we're adding that to the time at which the attempt was started. And that's going to freeze time essentially at this value for the duration of this context manager. So what we can do now is we can get a value called remaining by taking the attempt that we got above and we're going to call that method that we're testing here. And that was the get time remaining method. And we're then going to use the Django testing functionality. So self.assert equal. That is a function or a method that's defined on the Django test case class. And we want to assert that the remaining value is equal to a given number here. Now, what number are we expecting this to be equal to? Well, we have a two minute time delta after the attempt was started. And if we look at the attempt here, the time limit was 10 minutes. So we take that 10 minutes and what we're doing is we're subtracting two minutes from that. And that means the time remaining should be eight minutes. So if we take eight minutes in seconds, we can just multiply eight by 60 and that should evaluate to true. So let's test this out on the command line. We're going to run python manage.py test and that runs the Django test suite. And you can see that I found three tests and it ran them all and they all passed. Now two of those tests are just saying pass at the moment. There's no functionality, but this one here is the key one that we've written and that is now passing. So to summarize what we've done, we get a quiz attempt here and that has a started time. We then use the time machine package to travel through time by two minutes forward. And we want to assert that the time remaining at that point using this get time remaining method is equal to eight minutes. So we have a quiz here with a time limit of 10 minutes. We travel forward in time two minutes after the attempt was started and we assert that the time remaining is correctly evaluating to eight minutes. So that's an example of some functionality you could test using the time machine package. Let's now move on to the second method, which is called test quiz time expired. Now this is going to be extremely similar to what we had above. So I'm just going to copy this code 
and let's just paste that into this second method. This time we're going to change a couple of values, so instead of 2 minutes, let's move forward by 11 minutes in time. And if we calculate the time remaining from this, the attempt, as you can see in the setup method, has 10 minutes of a time limit. And if we go forward by 11 minutes, of course the time has run out, and we should return 0 here. And the reason we're returning 0, again, is because in the method we're using the max function in the return statement. So it should return 0, let's bring back the terminal, and we're going to rerun the manage.py test command. And this time, hopefully, we're going to see two tests passing. And actually, we get three tests, but the important part is that they're all passing. This final test has no functionality, but let's change that now and add some. And this is just a last test here for a quiz that doesn't have a time limit. So if we go back to models.py, time limit minutes, this is a nullable field. And if the value is null, the assumption could be made maybe that the quiz does not have a time limit. So what we can do in the test is we can make some assertions about that. Now we're going to have to create a quiz that doesn't have a time limit, so what I'm going to do is just copy this here. And let's go down to that method and create a new variable called quiz no limit. And this one's going to be equal to a similar statement to what we copied, but we're going to just remove this time limit here and it's going to default to null. And we can also change the title here from limited quiz to unlimited quiz. We can then create an attempt just as we've done above here, so I'm going to copy this code. And in this quiz method we'll create an attempt and we're going to tie it to this quiz here. So let's remove this line and paste in the quiz with no limit. And we can create the assertion just below here. So it's going to be self.assert is none. And what we're going to use here is the attempt and we're going to call the get time remaining method. And the reason we expect this to be none, if we go back to models.py, if we scroll down to the get time remaining method, if the time limit in minutes on that parent quiz is not set, then this method is just going to return none. And that's what we expect here because the quiz we've attached to this quiz attempt does not have a time limit. And this is going to be the same if we travel forward in time. So let me just copy this statement here. And we're going to bring that down into this method. And let's say this time instead of minutes, we're going to travel forward in time by a given number of hours. Let's say two hours. This shouldn't affect the function at all. So I'm going to copy this assertion here into the context manager. When we call get time remaining, it should still be null. Now let's save this and go back to the terminal. And we're going to rerun test. Again, it's found all three tests. And this time all of them have a body. And all tests are passing OK. Now if we were to go here and change some of the functionality above, for example, if I change this to five minutes here, if we rerun tests, we should expect that to fail because the time remaining is not going to be zero in that case. And you can see that here, 300 seconds is not equal to zero. So let's change that back to 11 and save this. And that's going to be all we're going to show for this video. So if we look at what we've done here, we have used the time machine module and that mocks out all of the Python date and time calls and it allows you to essentially travel forward or backwards in time to make sure the time-based functionality of your code works as expected in these tests. So for any functionality that's dependent on times or dates, such as any kind of time limit, you can very easily use the Time Machine package to help with those kind of tests. And remember, this is just mocking values. You can do it yourself. But the Time Machine package is going to save you from having to do that yourself. And it's also going to handle some of the complexities behind the scenes of those kind of actions. So I think this is really cool, it's really useful, and it's something I've been using over the last week in a personal project. And I thought I would try and make a quick video on it, and I hope that has demonstrated why it might be useful to you. So thank you for watching. If you have found the content useful, check out the coffee page we have below the video. If you have any suggestions for similar content, let me know in the comments as well. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon in the next video.